It's like we're living in a fucking shithole. I mean, many good things that come from America, obviously. Many good things that come from our fucking government and shit. But at the fucking same time, nowadays, it's just like the exact same, well, not the exact same situation, but it's basically the same in terms of, like, the political struggles, struggles between two sides. Like, good grief. It's either, like, you're extremely against, like, progression and innovation, which is basically the essentials of the left-wing and liberalism and all that shit, or you're extremely against tradition and preserving our culture and shit. I mean, really, it's just stupid. And I don't understand it. Like, why? <laughs> why is that such a prevalent thing? Why can't it be like, oh yes, this is like, we should be incorporating both of those ideas. Because innovation and progress are fucking important. But no, no, I, like, progression and innovation, good things. Tradition and preserving the past, amazing. Combine the two and you'll get an amazing fucking concoction that would really help our fucking country. But no, that doesn't generate the views and the money and the fucking power-hungry maniacs in charge of every single fucking country on Earth right now. I fucking hate him. <laughs> ah, Jesus. I, I swear, it's like... Ah, Matthew. Not Matthew, that's, that, so that's writer dude. Daniel, I mean, I swear, he's got some real fucking genuine fucking political knowledge there. He's really fucking smart, but he's also extremely biased towards one side, <laughs> considering his upbringing. I don't fucking blame the dude. He had a horrible childhood, but at the same time, you need to combine ideas. It's how you get the perfect soup. I mean, think about it that way. Garbage should be like a big ass soup that like everyone is participating in, and your bunch of meat, your bunch of veggies, and the and the stock. But just you need a fucking mix. <laughs> you meet you need a genuinely genuinely varied and out out just. You need a mix of so many. You mean you need a mix of different viewpoints from every side of the political spectrum. Commies, fucking, hell, even fascists, who fucking cares? The government needs a mix of varying political identities and degrees and shit, because, my god, that would help. That would fucking help. It really would. Sure, it'd be, it'd be a shouting contest, but it, in that shouting contest, in the arguments, maybe, just maybe, there could be mutual understanding and some common ground that everyone can find and build together, for fuck's sake. Like healthcare, universal healthcare and fucking all that shit? Absolutely great idea. But, to, but the way that side, the left, is pushing it, terrible idea. It should be a mix. <laughs> a soup. A soup of political ideologies. That would be the best thing for our government, honestly. If, they, if you're able to connect it, if you're able to connect all of those ideas into one singular whole, then you might have a chance of making this country better. But nah. Who the fuck wants unity and peace when you can have division and drama and strife, and because of that you can sow fear and crises and make the people scared of each other so they don't focus on the real problems? Which would be the government right now, not to mention climate change and war. Like, Jesus Christ, there's so many more important problems that we, that, like, America should be focusing on. But no. No. <laughs> Focus on the fucking petty-ass bullshit. Like, oh, do you, do you think that people should be able to fuck who they want? That's so petty. They like, obviously, yes, they should, but it's the pettiest fucking bullshit. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck?
does that sound? I don't trust like that. I don't trust like that. I don't trust like that. So bed knife it is. Bed knife it is. You can just go there. Oh fuck. Um Jesus, what the fuck? Oh boy. So many books, so many books on my shelves have so many varying ideas about, like, God, I love it. I need to fucking read this again. So annoyed, man. Fucking amazing. Oh, Mircea Kaldorescu, I cannot get enough of him. The dude's amazing in writing. I, I cannot, he's... Oh, he's bas he basically did in so annoyed, what... What fucking Kafka did for Prague and Joyce did for, for Dublin. It's fucking amazing. <sighs> God. And I give his fucking... Ugh, every sentence is so good. Honestly. Let me check. Let, let me just turn to a random page in here. Blah, 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 this one. Oh, right here you have, you, oh boy, this, this page, I remember this page. <sighs> like, find love, the grief, like it awaits, it leaves you paralyzed in your bed as the day begins to shine through your window. What could it be, my mother would wonder aloud whenever she recounted a dream and she remembered all of them, keeping them in the, in the, Valuable inset collection of her memory and her unwritten book of poems worthy of Pliny and Le Chumont. What could it be? You wonder as well in your craven syllogisms, automatically thinking the way a mantis makes a nest without looking back, of an interpretation unpacking the warm newborn dream, its organs and apparatuses, its gears, crosses, asterisks, and crescents, so that through an inept and inefficient process of reverse engineering, you may create, you may reconstruct. A meaning, an alphabet, a language. You wave the photographic paper through the revealing bath, but the revealer cannot reveal the revelation. On the contrary, it hides it on its back, the reverse which introduce, introduces insanity into the world, losing the world from which the terrible and sacred message comes. Every dream is a message, a call, a portal, a wormhole, a multidimensional object that you, as, that as you interpret, you mystify and squander. You are used to books you can eat placidly, eating a sandwich during the break in the teacher's lounge, or in the tram on your way home, the illusory doors painted on the walls of all the paintings and all the galleries of the world, to your head rocking to the beat of all songs, but you're blind, deaf and mute, to the desperate call from their core. Dreams are escape plans, like music, metaphysics, and spherical geometry. Everything that speaks to us in the world says the same thing. Get me out of here. Leave. This is not your home. Every dream asks you a serious question. 
You wouldn't understand if you interpret. You'll only understand if you answer. Whenever you are called in the middle of the night by name, don't an hesitate. Answer. I don't try to understand. I proceed with the story of my anomalies. Philosophers have hitherto only interpreted the world in various ways. I sometimes tell myself, parrying the famous phrase that has spilled so much blood, the point is to escape it. The sort of vision I had a few nights ago seemed, at least to my desperate mind, to show, if not a method at least, a distant final light, like the one you can see at the center of a crystal maze, so close, but still separated from you by kilometers of corridors. The parabola's transparency, like the transparency of glass walls. The irony of the horn gate of true dreams sent by God, which you still will never understand. I'll write here the same way I've written down my dreams, transparent and yet obscure. The more limp, limpid they are, the more indecipherable they become. The little story that occurred to me. Yeah, um... Just that alone is the only selling point anyone should need from that book. Like, oh my god, that's the entire book right there. I swear, if Matthew hasn't fucking read it by now, he needs to fucking buy it, and he needs to read it in a fucking delirious, sweat-fueled just fever. So fucking good. It's so fucking good. I honestly think it might be my favorite book now. I'm not even joking. God. Her relationship ended with Alexandra Thoreau. Hello, Mircha Car Rescue. She's a... All the time. I just say, oh, I burp and I say, excuse me, if there's someone nearby that can hear. <laughs> oh, boy. I need more, I need more card rescue books. Oh, boy. Uh, and speaking of La Chuma, I really love him. His stuff is so Fucking good. Mm. I replace melancholy with courage, a doubt with certainty, despair with hope. Oh man. I just love this fucking book so much. The disturbances, anxieties, depravities, death, exceptions to the physical or moral order, the spirit of negation, the brutishness, the hallucinations waited upon by the will, torments, destruction, madnesses, tears, insatiabilities, slaveries, deep thinking, imaginations, novels, the unexpected things which must not be done, the chemical peculiarities of the mysterious vulture that watches for the carcass of some dead illusion, Precocious and abortive experiences, obscurities with a flea-like shell, the terrible obsession with pride, the inoculation with deep stupors, funeral orations, envies, betrayals, tyrannies and pieties, irritations, bitternesses, aggressive tirades, hmm, insanity, spleen, rational terrors, strange misgivings the reader would rather not feel, Grimaces, neuroses, the cruel routes through which one forces last-ditch logic. Exaggerations, lack of sincerity, the nuisances, platitudes, gloom, the dismal as the child bursts worse than murder. Passions, the clique of assize court novelists. Tragedy, odes, melodramas, internally pre presented extremes, reasoned, reason hissed off stay with impunity, the odors of wet chicken, dulled tastes. 
frogs, octopi, sharks, the simoon of the deserts, whatever is clairvoyant, squinting, nocturnal, narcotic, somnobulist, slimy, talking seal, equivocal, consumptive, spasmodic, aphrodisiac, anemic, one-eyed, ah, I used to do this all the time, hermaphrodite, bastard, albino, <laughs> pederast, Phenomenon of aquarium and beer, phenomenon of aquarium beer delayed, the drunken hours of taciturn dejection, the fantasies, pugnancies, monsters, demoralizing syllogisms, the excrement, whatever is thoughtless as a child, desolation, the intellectual machinial tree, perfume chantras, thighs like camellias, the guilt of a writer who rolls down the slope of nothingness and scorns himself with joyous cries. Remorse, hypocrisies, the vague perspectives that grind you within their imperceptive mills, the sober gobs of spittle upon sacred axioms, the insinuating tickling of vermin, idiotic prefaces like those of Cromwell, Mill de Maupin and Dumas, decrepitude, impotence, blasphemies, asphyxiation, fits, rages before these foul carnal houses which I blush to name. It is time at last to react against what offends us and so imperiously bows us down. God, I fucking love this book. Taste is the fundamental quality which sums up all the other qualities. It is the neck plus ultra of the intelligence. The, through this alone is genius the supreme health and balance of all faculties. Villemain is, is 34 times more intelligent than Eugene Sue and Friedrich Soule. His preface to the dictionary of the Academy will survive Walter Scott's and Fenimore Cooper's novels and all novels possible and imaginable. The novel, the novel is a false genre since it describes the passions for their own sakes. The moral conclusion is missing. Describing the passions is nothing. It is enough to be poor and part jackal, part vulture, part panther, we do not hold with that. To describe them in order to submit them to an exalted morality look like Corneille is another master. He who refrains from doing the former, remaining capable of admiring and understanding those with the gift of doing the latter, surpasses with all the superiority of virtue over vice him who does the former. Honestly, though, this dude was so fucking intelligent. <laughs> like, Le Chumont was one... <sighs> well, I guess his real name would be, would be Dukas, but... Uh... God damn, I love him. Why is it so fucking hot in this room? Always is. Does the uh, fans going? Jesus, man.